All right, so this is a quick video of five lessons I learned prepping for the competition that I just did this weekend. quarantine we're all just cooped up in our places and we're just making the most out of everything and um, yeah I found that I was able to really find what worked for me and hone into it and stick at it um, with the focus of a hawk <laughs> uh, so number one for me was that you're able to use creativity uh, to get the most without the gym uh, from the home, I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of barbell, like metal bars and an easy bar. And I have some plates that go up to, if I combine them, I think they're like 80 pounds or like 100 pounds. So yeah, I just play with those things. Just uh, I make our ottoman chairs, like I just... They're just squares, but I stack them um, or side by side and I just lay on them like a bench. So, you know, like stuff like that. Um, yeah, you're, you're just not able to overload as much uh, because you don't have, well, more plates and you don't have the safety of metal beams holding the bars in place for you to push or pull. It does do the trick. Just, again, no overload means you're not really breaking down the muscle more. So, you know, moving forward, I'll be using volume and tempo focus. Uh, let's say, like, you know, a five count with the negatives or whatnot um, to compensate for that lack of resistance load. Um, moving forward, we'll see if uh, muscle building is, yeah, if that's, if we're able to actually trigger more muscle growth, I assume yes, given like, you know, biological principles. Like, yeah, it will work in time, but it'll take a lot more time than if you actually had the overload, uh, the ability to overload the weights. So if you have a home gym, good on you. Um, lesson number two is knowledge of metabolism and biosynthesis and nutrition really, really, really helps. Uh, or just knowing uh, how sodium, water, carbs, fats, even proteins, like how that is metabolized and like in what at what rate, in what times, how they're deposited in the body, um, how they're going to be utilized for energy, especially like the timing of um, of things, not just within the day of consumption, but like how does my consumption today. Uh, affect my state tomorrow and the day after so a lot of that like I, I had to learn that like as I was going so I was using my body pretty much as a canvas as a testing ground for you know seeing how not decreasing sodium but decreasing water would um, manifest in the exterior look of my body um, Lesson number three that really helped me was just knowing when to switch from HIIT training to LIST training. So HIIT, um, high intensity interval training versus LIST, the low intensity um, steady state um, type of training. Now, what changes is for HIIT, like that uses a lot more glycogen stores. So that's more carbohydrates. Um, for lists, that's more you're training your body to to metabolize fat to get uh, to use fat as energy over glycogen. So if you're depleting your glycogen stores with HIT, um, that's what I was doing for let's say for the peak week. So the week before leading up to the show, you want to deplete your glycogen stores uh, to get rid of the interstitial fluid, and to be able to do that, or once you're you've done that really the only um responsible way that you can um 
do cardio, lose more fat without, you know, burning out, is to switch to lists just to use the excess stored fat as energy. Uh, lesson number four is leading up to the peak week or leading up to the competition, um, prepping with the if it fits your macros mindset, the IIFYM uh, principle that is that seems more viable now that we're all still in quarantine. Uh, let's say, for example, pork, uh, leaner cuts of pork, like a pork sirloin or a less fatty tenderloin. If you cook it yourself and yeah, like if you look at the macros, the macros are actually like really, really good uh, depending on how you cook it, how you season it. If there's sauce, just don't put sauce, just salt and pepper it. That's what I do. Um, it can really, really, really be your friend if it fits your macros principles. Uh, especially like shopping, you want to go in and out. You just want to know what you're grabbing, you know, if it fits, eat it. Um, so the fifth and final lesson that I learned is um, at the end of the day, the tried and tested dieting path or training path is best especially closer to competition. So I know I mentioned if it fits your macros, but um, during peak week and the week before that, I was really stringent with my nutrition. I did the, actually even before then, you know, the chicken breast, broccoli, like all all of that stuff. Like I, I had to do that just to get my body to be used to consuming cleaner sources. And I think the cleaner the source, the better. Like right now I'm gonna be on a bulk phase and I want it to be a lean bulk, as lean as possible um, so that I climb in weight without sacrificing what I had already built up. And the best way to do that again is just go down the beaten path and just stick to the course because it's it's worked for everyone a lot of people who do this so just sticking to that sticking to the guns that we're given like that's that's yeah we humans are creatures of habit and like even biology uh biologically speaking or genetically speaking like we have this set path to be able to look this way or perform this way and you know all else fails there's that that we could lean on so anyway those again are the five lessons i learned prepping during quarantine time um i hope you guys took something out of that and so let's keep going it's lean bulk face i'm calling it the improvement season and i'll catch you later Oh, 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 oh,